hotter day. Got my laundry done anyway. I'm down here, about quarter of 12. It'll get hotter. I might have to move to another bench where there's more shade. We're looking at miracles. So many people have so many ideas. They think miracles are for them or anything that happens. Uh, you cut your toenail right. That's a miracle. Babies are born. That's a miracle. Well, this is just the supernatural way that God operates every day. It's not beyond his means. It's his norm. Uh, the fact that he holds the universe together by his own power is a supernatural thing. We don't wake up the next morning finding the universe is gone. But the, the purpose of God's miracles operating outside of the normative way he operates, that's the issue we're looking into. We've looked into that at first. Now, if a miraculous event must occur in order to authenticate the person, it might be new revelation, but we have a closed Bible, 66 books until Christ comes again, in which now revelation will be additional. So the purpose of God's miracles so far, operating out of the norm of the way he normally operates, is to authenticate the person, place, or, or event as something coming from God, as opposed to when it's not accompanied by a miraculous event, such as in the first century, before the New Testament Bible was actually penned in Greek, we had a number of people talking about Jesus, the disciples of Jesus and those who learned about him from those disciples, testifying to who he was. He died on the cross for sins in the gospel, reaffirming what the Old Testament predicted. Uh, those people were able to, when they were correct on the issues, were able to perform certain miracles that would authenticate their witness. Others that, that weren't uh, proposing a, an authentic witness to Christ were not able to perform those miracles. And there were many in those days, as there are many today. So let's look at now other miracles that are done for evil purposes. Take a look at this. Let's see. Let's try to control and find Revelation 19:20. There it is. And in Revelation 19:20 it says, "And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet." who performed the signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who had re received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. And those two were thrown in alive into the lake of fire, which burns with the brimstone. So they performed and deceived those who uh, were marked with the mark of the beast, allowed that to happen to them. So far that age has not, that part of the, the age has not begun yet. So signs and wonders, which includes miraculous healings, can be performed by Satan and the demonic world, and they are done to deceive people into following the viewpoint that is produced by demons and Satan himself. Protection on this. Study the Word of God. Keep your mind set on what the gospel is and what it is not. These signs and wonders appear to be good works, and often are with respect that material gain or being cured in and of itself is not evil. <clears throat> but the deception which it is tied to is evil. Many healings by individuals claiming healing powers, such as devotees of false religions, like Hinduism, Western Indian, Haitian, and other tribal witch doctors, they deceive those who follow such satanic religions and further encourage people to worship idols. The good that is done by the miracles is therefore used to deceive the individual into following a demonic religion. It usually has a negative end to it. These miracles and healings are obviously welcomed and bring conviction and allegiance to a false god. The power behind those healings, which are often real, is Satan and the demonic world. In addition to this, there have been far more miraculous healings under circumstances <clears throat> which do not involve any religion at all. They're so-called miraculous, but often those are things that God provides in a normative way, so they're not really miracles. Further, many so-called miracles are even done in the name of the Lord himself, but not of, of God at all. At all. Matthew 7, 22-23. <clears throat> many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And it implies, and they did. And then I will declare to them, Jesus says, I never knew you. You never believed in him. You were never of his sheepfold. Depart from me, you who practice iniquity. So the miracle, miraculous events, they did perform, but they weren't 
and they, they, they even said it was in his name, but they weren't believers. On that day, that's the day, the time of the Lord's second coming, when he will judge men living on the earth at that time. In, the, in the Matthew 25, 31 to 46, it's called the judgment of nations. Notice that the prophesying, casting out of demons, and many miracles, which were performed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, were miraculous, and yet were officially called by son, by the God the Son as evil. They weren't done truly in his name because those people did not believe in his name. So they got on board to do evil. Look at Acts 19.13. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. But they were evil. Compare 2 Corinthians 11, 12 to 14. But what I am doing, I, Paul, will continue to do, that I may cut off opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the matter about which we are, they are boasting. For such men are false prophets, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So an angel of light performs good deeds, and so can Satan in his disguise as such an angel. The scripture indicates that Satan's disguise is often effective. After all, he is the ruler of this world. Therefore, it is not surprising if his, Satan's servants, also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their deeds. So an angel of light and a servant of righteousness both do good works. One who disguises himself as either must as either must necessarily perform deeds which either have the deceptive appearance of good works or are truly good deeds toward an evil deceptive end, one which gains the allegiance of the deceived. So in the end run, if you don't have understanding of what the gospel is and who Christ is and what he did and what it takes to have eternal life, a moment of faith alone in Christ alone, and you witness or testify to or perform a miracle, you're not doing it for God, you're doing it for your own evil end. <clears throat> Many megachurches do that. The miracles and healings of the demonic world are obviously perceived as good, since they are welcomed and applauded, especially those miracles performed which convince people that the Antichrist is God. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 8-11, this will happen. And then that lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders. Notice that the Antichrist is empowered by Satan with all power and signs and false wonders. These include this includes the power of healing, for that is one that is one of the signs and wondrous gifts. That is the one whose coming in is in accord with the activity of Satan with all powers and signs and false wonders, and verse ten, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. They denied the gospel. They're into something else. Something may be lordship salvation. Doing deeds to authenticate your salvation. And they go along with performing miracles to authenticate their testimony. Both of which are false. Notice that the use of the power and signs and wonders, false wonders by the Antichrist as empowered by Satan was extremely effective. Deceiving many so as not that they, they, they were to be, going to be saved. So it also affects believers who are secure in their eternal destiny, but not in their rewards that they will receive in heaven. These demonically originated miracles and healings can and do deceive believers, preventing them from being effective Christians by getting them to follow the deceptions of the demonic worlds leading by these miracles and healings. So if you go into a church that preaches nothing but miracles and healings, I'd stay away. Many miraculous healings and signs performed by pagan witch doctors and the like, which are demonically empowered, deceive people into worshiping false gods. In spite of the obvious immediate good that the healings did, these healings have a demonic origin as permitted by the sovereignty of God Almighty. Because of the continued disbelief in individuals, he does this. God invokes a turning of them over to their own delusions. So stay with Scripture. You hear something that sounds a little weird? Check it up with Scripture. Sex, especially in the end times when you get to be there. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8-11. And with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. And for this reason God will send upon them a deluding influence, so that they might believe what is false, in order that they may all, all, 
all may be judged who do not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. Now this principle not only applies to unbelievers but also to believers. Those Christians who continuously reject the truth as they hear them in God's word are in danger of having God send upon them a deluding influence so that they also might believe what is false in order that they all may be judged, not for eternal life in this case, but for discipline and for the loss of eternal rewards in heaven. you got to stay close to what Scripture says, so that means constantly reading it every day. Compare Romans 1, 28 to 32 and 32, which indicate that there are those who know what God says in his word, but choose to repeatedly defy God and even encourage others to do the same. Just as unbelievers are subject to God's hardening of the mentality, so he will also harden the mentality of the unrepentant believer. Romans 1, 28 to 32, and also Romans verse, uh, here's 28, 1, 28. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. And although they knew the ordinance of God, applying this to believers, and although the believers knew better from what they had learned from God's word, and although they know the ordinance of God that they, those who are unbelievers who practice such things are worthy of death, they only do the same as the unbeliever does who has not been saved, but also give hearty approval to those who practice those things. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. Now you apply this to believers, and although the believers knew better from what they learned from God's word about, for example, God's purpose and use of healing and miracles, they not only continued to violate his word, but gave hearty approval to those who practice false miracles. So God gave them over to a deluding influence so that they might believe what is false. So God permits the demonic healing and other miracles to seal their minds into a delusion. And that's going to be a, be a rude awakening at the judgment seat of Christ when you, as a believer you find out that you allowed yourself by not studying God's word. So stay away from people who promise a miracle or say you're missing out things if you don't get into the miraculous indications of prosperity or miraculous healings. Uh, and, and if you don't have them, then maybe you're not a true believer. Healings and miracles, as reported today, do not follow the scriptural pattern. Throughout history, there have been many more miraculous healings than you can count under the auspices of non-Christians Authorities such as doctors who are unbelievers, non-Christian friends and family members, non-Christian organizations, and so on, than in the Christian church itself. These miraculous healings were for the most part not attributed to anyone with the gift of healing. Many of these healings, it can be shown, were psychosomatic in origin and were healed by the release of the patient's mentality which caused the illness. Many of the illnesses were temporarily in remission, but as typical, and with many diseases started up again shortly after the reported miracle cure, this time worse than ever. This happens in the churches that proclaim miraculous healings, and then the people go back into their wheelchair with a worse than ever. Many of the miraculous cures were actually hysterically oriented, where enough adrenaline flowed in the body of the patient, such that he or she gave visible evidence of being cured, standing up from a wheelchair. But shortly after the cure, they relapsed into the same ailment, only worse than ever with the new physical and emotional complications. And many of the miraculous cures were without the aid of a person designated as having the gift of healing and were legitimate miraculous healings given the extent and knowledge of medical science at the time. Recall this, that miraculous events that an individual believer performs are to authenticate him for God's specific purpose. And if there's no specific purpose except that he's a believer, then it's false. Recall that the Antichrist was raised from the dead by Satan. Miraculous raising from the dead. Was he a Christian? No. Many men of miracles and healings have been claimed and authenticated by the Roman Catholic Church. Many of these miracles have been substantiated as truly supernatural events and healings. And they serve to enhance the conversion and continued devotion of millions of Roman Catholics throughout the world to their own destruction. For the Roman Catholic Church teaches a false gospel of salvation by works an immediatory work of Mary, who is made out to be a goddess to be worshipped on herself on an equal level with Jesus Christ. Certainly that can't be the gospel. Certainly the agent behind these good works, these miracles and healings, is not of God himself, leading millions of individuals to astray. So we conclude, since God's revelation to mankind 
for this age are complete. 